Hello, hello, this is Yvette Briscoe, and I'd like to welcome you to Farewell Fat Diet. And today, our special guest is Dr. John Dempster, and I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself and a little bit about his background, but I did want to share with you why I selected him to be a part of our masterclass today and to help us to understand a little bit more about what we can do to help us on our weight loss journey. So um, I selected Dr. Dempster because one of the things that we tend to do is ignore the things that can have the greatest impact on our weight loss. And um, when we're talking about our gut health and the things that are going on inside the body, sometimes we ignore that because we think that, you know, four hours in the gym is just going to do it. And that's not the case. And so he comes to us with a very strong background on the parts that we sometimes overlook that can um, just you know, help us to really energize ourselves and uh, move a little bit faster on the journey where we want to go. So Dr. Dempster, would you just tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Thanks, Yvette. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is such a great topic and I'm excited to, to dive into it today with you. Um, yeah, a little background on me. I, I am a board certified uh, naturopathic doctor and functional medicine practitioner. And my whole journey began a long time ago. I was heading into traditional medicine, and so I thought uh, from a young age, and you know, I always knew I wanted to get in healthcare. My mom and dad, they never were pushing me, but they always said, oh, we have a feeling you probably will, will end up in medicine somehow. And uh, that's, I didn't know any better, so I was heading into traditional medicine for the longest time. And uh, I grew up in a household where fish oil before school was normal, vegetable juice after school before dinner was normal, and to, my, to us, we thought we were, my siblings and I, we thought we were the freaks on the block <laughs> because, you know, no, nobody else in our small town was doing this. My parents had the, the foresight and, you know, the, just the, the clarity to, to know that nutrition was so important from a young age, even though we refuted it. And uh, so that, you know, as a young kid, you kind of, you rebel against it, but then you wonder why and you start, your brain starts to kick in as you evolve and, you know, turn into a, a young adult and you're like, huh. I wonder if there was something to that. And as I went into my pre-med, I kept asking and asking all of my uh, uh, other med schools that I was looking at, I said, so tell me about your nutritional program because nutrition you know, has such a role with medicine. Tell me about it. And it would be crickets on the other end. Um, and, you know, there obviously was not a very strong part of the curriculum in a lot of the traditional med schools. And even today, that's still the case, unfortunately. However, it is changing. And I'm, I'm encouraged to say that. But lo and behold, you know, that uh, led me into understanding a bit more and learning. I'd never even heard of it before about naturopathic medicine. And to make a long story short, I bet uh, that was the journey I chose. And there's been no looking back. And, you know, the power of treating the person is really what's passionate and what I'm passionate about and treating the whole person and getting to the root cause, which is really the tenet of not only functional medicine, but naturopathic medicine. And both of those together just make it a very, very powerful um, tool for, for everyone on this planet. That's amazing. It's funny how we start out, you know, doing one thing and then it actually leads us on our journey. We find oh, totally. the destination we're supposed to be at. So that's great. So how about if we just jump right in? Um, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about um, is bacteria because, you know, right now, of course, we have um, the flu bug going around. And so when you think of um, of bacteria, you either think of, you know, because there's viral and there's bacterial um, types of illnesses. And so people immediately think of the bad stuff. And I know that we, in our body, we have good bacteria that we really need to have functioning the way it's supposed to in order for us to be healthy. So what is the difference between good and bad bacteria? And how do we make sure that we have the right balance and what we're supposed to have? So that's, that's a really important place to start. What we do in our clinic is we, as I mentioned, we practice functional medicine in the sense that we are doing a lot of testing with each and every patient that comes through the door to identify the unique situation that's going on, whether it be in their gut or other areas that we're going to be addressing. But just to take a step back, when we talk about our bodies, here's an interesting statistic. And if you think of all the human cells that we have in our body, think of your skin, all of your organs, think of all your muscles, think of how many trillions of cells there are in your body. Well, now take that number and times it by 10. That's how much we have in terms of cellular microbi uh, uh, microbiology uh, going on in our body. This is a huge, huge number when you can think about that. Now, here's another astounding fact. Take all of the genetic material we have as a human and times that by 100. 
And that is how much genetic material is actually bacterial in our body. So the reason why I'm saying this and sort of setting the floor for this is that the, whatever we're doing to affect our bacteria in our body, and I'll get to the good and bad in a moment, whatever we do to affect this microbiome or this gut flora or whatever is going on in all the different microbiomes in our body, the microbiomes in our skin and our eyes and our nose, we've got to make sure that we are understanding that it's, this is essential for us to thrive. I mean, if we, without bacteria, we die, all right? Without our good bacteria, mixed in with some of the bad bacteria, we die. And so it's so important that we actually start to talk about this. And I'm glad you brought it up. You know, good bacteria, as it sounds, you know, it's, it's something that promotes optimal health in us. And there's numerous strains that can be measured and, and uh, be nurtured by our diet and our lifestyle. And fortunate now that there are some uh, cutting edge tests and lab diagnostics that we can utilize to identify if we're ever deficient uh, or we need some support in certain areas. And in the same breath, there's two other categories. There's something called a commensal group, which is usually comprised of the imbalanced uh, microbiome, uh, micro, uh, uh, the, back, the gut bacteria rather. And then we have what are called our dysbiotic organisms, which are generally linked in the disease-causing uh, disease group. So if we start to look at beneficial commensal and uh, pathogenic bacteria, and we measure these, we can find out very quickly where we need to support somebody. And this is very important, Yvette, for weight loss. This is important for a lot of the uh, autoimmune conditions and degenerative diseases like cancer and heart disease and diabetes and Alzheimer's. There's so many things that are impacted on a daily, so many systems that are impacted on a daily level by what's going on in our gut. But that is where we begin uh, each and every program with, with our patients as they come through the door. I think that's a, a fascinating um, place to begin, particularly because I have an autoimmune disease. I have multiple sclerosis. And um, just, you know, as we were chatting, I, I really began to think about the fact that I have not looked at that enough as far as how it impacts the disease. I already have the disease, so I have to look at how it impacts the course of the disease and, um, you know, what's going on in my body. So I, that's my next Part of the journey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, so once you have an idea of what the levels are, where someone is out of balance with um, the the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, um, and I'll keep it in the in the simpler um, terms there. Where do you go from there? Because you know, relating back to like the autoimmune situation with me, inflammation is a huge thing um, for people yeah. with MS and for people with rheumatoid arthritis, for people with a lot of different um, autoimmune diseases. But it's also a factor in why sometimes people hold on to weight, even though they're eating healthy and exercising and doing those those things. So how do we identify what's going on with the inflammation? And then where do we go from there? And that's the key word. And the key word for virtually anything to do with anything in health right now is inflammation, right? And so there are luckily, again, a number of ways that we can track and identify where these or what types of inflammation are going on and, and where these triggers are coming from. So, you know, again, it's important to make sure that you are assessing people properly. And there's going to be some generic things that we can apply to the masses event. And I think that's very important to begin there. But at the end of the day, each and every one of us, we're very biochemically, genetically, and environmentally unique. And we've got to make sure that we treat the person and, you know, not necessarily the label. You know, like yourself, there's, you know, we have a number of patients with MS, but they all have a very slightly different version of their program based on their unique set of values and data that we gather. So when it comes to measuring inflammation, uh, there's a number of ways to do this. And there's some very important ways to do this. It starts with blood, to be honest. And that's where we can run some uh, very simple yet effective markers. One of my favorites is HSCRP, homocysteine, and uh, sedimentation rate. And these are some great just things that you can ask your doctor today. Everyone who's listening right now, please write these down. And these are just very core uh, general uh, inflammatory markers that you can start to look at right away. However, that's not usually enough to stop that because a lot of times these will come back negative or clean. And we need to still do a further, uh, you know, deeper dive into what might be triggering inflammation in our gut. And there are some markers in our gut that are called lactoferrin, calprotectin, and lysozyme, just to name a few. And these are very, very powerful markers that if we identify them, uh, we can nip these in the bud very easily with our diet, with lifestyle, with uh, certain stress management techniques, because stress we can potentially get into in a moment, 
but this also triggers a massive amount of inflammation when it's not controlled. And I don't want to startle everyone out there because we all have stress and we all have stress on a daily level, but it's the uncontrolled stress and it's the stress that actually controls us that is going to have a, a negative impact on us. So that's a whole nother conversation, you bet. Uh, I, I host a summit called the Mental Wellness Summit, so that's a very big topic to get into. Um, but you know, these are things that we can start to look at and empower our patients uh, to make change that can reduce and quench the, you know, the inflammatory triggers. Um, another thing that we look at uh, is, is huge is, is where to begin is has to do with food, obviously. And there's so many triggers in food and we're just learning about all the ways that we can measure foods and how they impact our body from an inflammatory uh, process. And a very effective yet simple way to start is literally to run a food sensitivity panel. And I'll, I'll preface this by saying there's no perfect food test out there yet on the market. And I, I know the tests are getting better and better and better. However, I still encourage people to try this because it can take a lot of the guesswork for some of the more hidden, more subtle foods that might be promoting inflammation. And we've seen it, this be enormously effective for a lot of our patients for all sorts of inflammatory conditions. And, and back to your topic today, not just MS, Yvette, but, but weight, right? And this is a huge area. If we're holding on to foods that are promoting subtle amounts of inflammation, we're gonna hang on to water weight and obviously produce excess fat. And this is gonna just fall off if we identify these foods and remove them from our diet. We do hear a lot about, as you know, I'm sure you've had people talk about this, you've had about gluten, obviously, about pasteurized dairy, about refined sugars. These are very big topics that I don't need to run a test to tell you right now that they're going to promote inflammation. And in fact, one of my profs, um, uh, we've done some work down at Harvard, and, and one of the, the lecturers down there said, look, if you've got an autoimmune diagnosis, you don't need to run a test. Get off of gluten, full stop. Now, that obviously doesn't apply to everybody who's listening today uh, from an autoimmune perspective, but it is something that I would challenge people. I say, look, you know, we read a lot about gluten. It's a big buzzword right now, but there is some merit to this. Um, and I'm not, you know, uh, creating a, a permanent um, gap in everyone's diet from gluten for life. But it is a, a challenge that I throw out there to, to most people when I speak saying, look, give this a try. If you've not tried it before, it can be very, very helpful just to get that initial momentum going and get some quick wins out of the gate so that you can start to say, hey, you know what? This is worth it. I can, I can stick with this crazy advice that, you know, these, these unconventional practitioners are telling me that my medical doctor is not telling me. Um, but that's, you know, again, that's another large topic to, to get into, Yvette. Um, but those are some very important things from an inflammatory perspective to start. Well, I, and I like that because, um, yes, gluten is a, a topic that we are um, discussing, but it's also like almost a shock factor, right? You, when somebody says you need to go gluten free, you know, we kind of go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like three quarters of what I eat has gluten in it. How do I do that? And if we're following any sort of FDA food pyramid, um, you know, right. what's, what's at the bottom of that food pyramid? <laughs> it's, it's grains. So, yeah. you know, I would say take that food pyramid and flip it upside down. And that's probably a bit more of an appropriate pyramid for you. But, uh, you know, these are, these are important things. Food is medicine. Absolutely. And a lot of people listening today, you know, have tried every diet under the sun. This isn't another diet, everyone. This is about eating you know, a healthy plan for you. I don't like the word diet because that all, always triggers temporary in my mind. Absolutely. We, try, we try to educate our patients and say, look, we're trying to create an eating program that's sustainable for you. And by the way, gluten may not be for life. However, you know, in some situations, such as yourself, Yvette, it might be. Uh, and, and I encourage my MS patients to really get, get that out for, you know, for the long haul. Um, but you know, there are other foods that can, we can remove temporarily and then potentially start to reintro uh, down the road as we see their inflammatory markers improve. And another big factor that, uh, that is involved with inflammation, something that I'm sure you were going to ask me about is leaky gut. And this has a huge role to play with any condition, including weight loss. And this is a big hidden area of inflammatory triggers in our body. So I have a lot of people that have been to at least seven doctors before they've been to, to me. They've been to, you know, every Bernstein program, every other, they've got their books stacked up, you know, their <laughs> South Beach diet and, you know, they've read everything and they know everything. But why aren't they losing weight? Well, at the same time, you know, they're trying to put this one size fits all approach onto them and that doesn't always work. And 
you know, there's so many more reasons for that. But circling back to our gut and how fundamental this is, people are walking around every day not being aware that how important their gut is because they may not necessarily be suffering from gas, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. So it's not really top of mind. Right. But you can be dealing with hidden gut issues that are sabotaging your health and sabotaging your weight loss if we're not looking into that area and creating that real strong foundation to build everything from. So, you know, the word leaky gut, again, is being thrown around as frequently as gluten these days, but it's for a good reason. And the medical definition is, is intestinal permeability. And there's ways to measure this to truly identify if you have uh, intestinal permeability. And the best test to do this is a urine test called a lactulose mannitol challenge. And, and this can be done, ask your, ask your practitioner. And if they're unfamiliar with this test, I do encourage people to seek out a functional medicine doctor in their area. And um, because this is, again, this is opening up a whole nother level of conversation of regarding your health that maybe your standard doc isn't trained in. Um, but if we can identify if leaky gut's an issue, Yvette, there are ways to fix that. And that's going to definitely behoove people to reduce this, this fire that's going on within them that's retaining fat, water, and creating all sorts of other inflammatory molecules to happen throughout their body. So I, you know, I hope that's uh, I hope that's a topic that you touch on with your clients. Absolutely, and I love the fact that you said you don't like to use the word diet because um, you know I when I'm working with people I don't let them use that either. You're we're not you know putting you on a diet. What we're doing is changing your nutritional plan yeah. so that you can have a healthy lifestyle. So I, I love that. Um, but what one of the things that I wanted to talk about really was um, just you know we see so many different detoxes on the market now. And again, the purpose is we're trying to get to gut health so that we have a balance in our bodies that allow us to do the things that we want to do, whether that is weight loss or more energy or, you know, any of those, those things that, that promote a, a better lifestyle. So tell us a little bit about detoxing. Why do we need to do it? What are we trying to do when we do it? And what is the best way to approach it? You know, when I started out in practice, a lot of my patients nicknamed me Dr. Detox because I talked about it so much. Toxins equal inflammation. And again, you know, we're talking some really key buzzwords right now that are, you know, infiltrating everybody's uh, inboxes, you know, if they subscribe to any health newsletter. But, you know, toxins are ubiquitous in our environment, but that doesn't make it okay to not deal with them. Okay. So, First off, first off, you know, what are we trying to detox? That's the question I always ask my patients. You know, we hear about all these, you know, beautiful detox diets and detox juice cleanses and all these one size fits all approaches, but really what are we trying to accomplish? And some of my patients are like, huh, never thought about that. So again, a proper assessment is always key. And again, not everybody has access to a functional medicine doctor, but that is always going to be a great spot to start. But if you don't have access, that's okay. You know, some key organs to start to think about are going to be your liver, your kidneys, and your gut. And one other one that's not, uh, not to be forgotten is your lymphatic system. So these are all things that we look at and we obviously assess to see how they're functioning so that we can tailor a program. But I say, look, if you can't do that, those are going to be the ones you're going to want to target because you're not going to hurt yourself if you do it gently. That's the key word as well. And, I, you know, I'm sure this is old news to many of your listeners right now, but gone are the days where we go from zero to hero and, you know, we try to dump everything out in, you know, three or four days. That's just going to end you. <laughs> you're not going to be showing up to work or school or whatever you need to be doing that day because you're going to be dealing with a serious crisis on your hands, <laughs> uh, especially if your organs aren't prepared to deal with that. And that can be a more serious situation. So I'm not a fan of people saying, hey, just go on a detox, you know, just go on a detox and, and, and dump everything out. I, I really like targeted detoxes just to be safe and obviously to be as effective as possible. Some very common toxins that are in our environment today obviously come from the food we eat. You know, there's obviously pesticides, herbicides, and all sorts of things that are happening with genetically modified organisms. So, you know, the first place to start is obviously to make sure that you are reducing the, the, the burden that's coming into your body. There's no point in trying to put out a fire with a fire hose in one hand with a gas tank in another, right? So we want to make sure that we are being smart about this and you know i know we can get into so many aspects of detox yvette so please you know fire off some uh, tangents that you'd like me to go down but that is absolutely imperative uh, place to start and you know then we can start talking about what's going on in your environment that's probably a much bigger 
conversation, but you know, you want to look at what's going on with your water. Is it going through a filter? Um, or are you drinking out of those crunchy water bottles that are filled with phthalates and PCBs? Um, these are massive endocrine disruptors that are going to change the way that your weight uh, holds on your body and very likely going to add a lot of pounds. Um, so we've got to start to reduce the burden. And then, of course, we want to start to support the organs that are involved with detoxification. And there's many ways, again, to do that. But it always, to me, starts with food. And once I have my patients eating organic, I get them juicing a glass of vegetable juice at breakfast and a glass of vegetable juice at dinner. And then, you know, that's just a great way to start soothing a lot of these inflamed organs that are involved with uh, detox processes. And, um, you know, that's just an easy thing that anyone listening right now can start to implement no matter what's going on in your health, uh, you know, no matter if you've had tests done or not, I re highly recommend, you know, adding some organic greens, uh, veggie juice to your program every single day. And that's just going to, the impact that plants have on our body. And I'm no, no mean preaching vegetarianism or veganism here, but the impact that plant molecules have on our body uh, are, we don't even know the half of it yet. And we're just learning, uh, you know, every year about, oh, there's more and more additional medicinal properties to a lot of the fruits and vegetables that we, we can have access to. So I do think that as a, a nation and as a, as a, you know, a society, we are plagued with a deficiency of, of healthy vegetables. And I say vegetables ahead of fruit. Uh, you know, it's so, so important to make sure that we are upping the intake of veggies, even if you still consume some animal products. We're not going to get into that right now. It's just make sure that you increase your veggies for everyone listening. Absolutely. So when, um, so if somebody is going to start the detox process, how do they choose, right? So you said that um, if we want to look at the specific organs that we're going to target, and let's say I am looking at liver and kidneys first. Um, because again, I, what, one of the things that I try to impart to everyone is that you don't have to do everything at once and trying to do everything at once is a recipe for failure. So if we're going to start and then keeping in mind, we want the gentle process, um, how do we start? Well, I, it goes back to, you know, assessment. I really do think that if you're going to go on a cleanse, find out if there's a, a dysfunction with any of your, your detoxing organs in your monkeries, because if there's a block, if we have you know, some issues going on with our gallbladder and we have gallstones hanging around. The last thing you want to do is put somebody on the classic master cleanse that I hear so many people going on because you can mobilize a stone that can lodge in your bile duct and that's going to equate to a trip to the emergency room. So, you know, you've got to understand that we can't, uh, and I know you understand this, Yvette, but we can't just put everybody on the same cleanse, right? Because it is not going to work for everybody. Um, so that's why I'm trying to be as general as I can right now in terms of, you know, where do we begin? I think, you know, cleaning up the diet is massive. You know, you, there are all sorts of different supplements and botanicals and, uh, you know, different glandulars that will really support different organs. And I'm a huge fan of a lot of the botanical tinctures that can support kidney function and liver function and lymphatic drainage. But what's the point of forcing more toxins into our circulation if they're not coming out? And that's why you've got to start at the bowels. And you've got to make sure that you're eliminating. And you've got to make sure that the bowels are moving, which is why, again, we circle back to the gut. It's so fundamental yeah. to make sure that we are just processing and moving things through. So if anyone is listening who has constipation, which you know, affects a large number uh, of people, uh, that's the first place to start, you bet. And often by tidying up your diet and adding this vegetable juice and working on some gut support, such as probiotics and certain prebiotics, um, these are things in fibers. These are going to be some things that can really start to move and get, get your bowels going. One of the things for our persistently constipated patients is we will run a nutrient panel to find out which minerals they're deficient in because a lot of the times there are some very key nutrients that they're lacking and that's stopping their, their bowels from moving. And a very key one uh, that a lot of people can try who are listening right now is, is magnesium citrate. And, you know, magnesium is a great, it's, it's a natural uh, agent. It's not a, um, a laxative in the sense that your, your bowels will become dependent on it. But it is something that right now it's the most deficient nutrient on the planet for, for humans. And it's the most deficient um, nutrient involved with constipation in most of our, our patients. So bringing that in uh, at, at enough of a level to support, uh, you know, gut motility is a great spot to start. So, um, and I love that because, you know, 
my mom, she's a nurse. Um, and that was one of the things that from the time I was knee high to a grasshopper, she always talked about is you have to make sure that you're regular because when you're not, you know, it affects the whole rest of your body. And, and, um, people, I think it, it, there's almost like there's a stigma about talking anything that has, that has to do with the bowel. People don't want to open up about that and say that they're constipated or they're having these issues. So how do you get people to understand how important that is and to not be embarrassed about it and to, to just be okay with the process? It's a natural process. I, I make a very light conversation about it on the first appointment. I say, look, we're going to talk a lot about your poo in our appointments. And it's okay to feel squirmish about that. But I try to, you know, have an icebreaker right away because it is a taboo. It is a stigma. A lot of us are, you know, we're, we're not used or comfortable to, to dealing with this. But I'll be honest with you, if you make light of it and you don't draw attention to it in a negative way, it's people will open up and they'll talk about it. And it's, it's interesting. It's the people that are holding on to a lot of emotion tend to be the most constipated, right? We're, we're hanging on to things here because there is a clear link that there's a massive neurological network in our gut. And if we have all sorts of signals coming from stress or uh, suppressed emotions, that is going to have a massive impact on our gut. And, you know, back to the whole weight thing for a moment here, but we're going to talk about hormones, I'm sure, but hormones have a huge connection to what's going on in the gut. This is where a lot of the nutrients that are cofactors for their production are absorbed. So if we've got problems in the gut and we're not pulling in those nutrients, we're going to have problems making those, those hormones. But there is some data right now supporting that a lot of the neurotransmitters and hormones that are involved with our metabolism actually start to be produced in our gut. And we've got to make sure that... You know, if we're trying to help somebody burn fat and reduce inflammation and, and reduce the risk of chronic disease, that we've got to get that gut working. And it's chronic constipation is not a, a laugh. It, it's not something that's always easily fixed. There's some very intricate aspects of our health that can have a, a role to play with constipation and hormones are one of them. And we do, you know, we do a very thorough uh, eight page uh, workup on, on each and every hormone excuse me, a, a page report on all of the hormones uh, for our patients, not just for constipation, but we'll, it's, it's so interesting when we start to identify us uh, imbalances that are going on, you know, specifically with estrogen and progesterone, for example, that can create this sort of sluggish bowel. And uh, by correcting those hormone, hormone imbalances, you're going to get the, everything moving a lot quicker and you're going to reduce inflammation and these patients are going to be happy and healthy. That's awesome. I, you mentioned um, prebiotics and probiotics, and you know I know uh, a lot of people who spend a lot of time in the gym um, have started to research and understand that there are benefits. But it, at, on a broader level, I don't think that a lot of people um, really understand what it is or the impact that it has, both in um, our body in general, the feeling that we get, um, energy levels, and things like that, but our actual gut health. So tell us a little bit about that and why, because most people get, <clears throat> I guess they target on the probiotic and mm -hmm. no one ever really talks about prebiotics. One of the tests we run looks at measuring all the good, or the majority of the good bacteria that reside in about the, the majority of the strains rather. And another part of that same test will look at a lot of the fuel sources for those bacteria. And this is again, falling into the, the term prebiotics. These are the the foods that feed the growth of our good bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there are some general generalities that I see a lot by, you know, after analyzing, uh, you know, thousands of these tests, basically it's, we're seeing that there's all sorts of strains that are imbalanced in the lactobacillus and the bifido um, strains. Mm -hmm. And these have a tremendous impact on a lot of systems in our body, but there's one very specific subspecies called the salivarius species that is now being linked in the literature to persistent weight gain. And by supplementing this type of probiotic, uh, the study, and I just read another study yesterday showing that this will actually reduce our own consumption of calories by 300 calories per day. And you know, when you think about that, that may not sound like a lot right off the bat, but it actually is a lot if you add that up day after day. And you know, this is without you even thinking about it, you're suddenly reaching for 300 less calories in a day. So that's the, you know, just to give you an example, that's how important it is to identify what those bacterial strains are doing. And by all means, anybody can go out and try that salivarious uh, probiotic and, and you can do it. You know, you're not going to hurt yourself by doing that. So I encourage people to try that. 
But the more info we get, the, the better we can help people, which is why it's so important to work with people like yourself, Yvette, you know, that can coach them through this and, uh, and show them the, the innuendos of going on in their health that can have huge dividends down the road. But the prebiotic conversation, you know, we measure things called short chain fatty acids, and these will oft often give us an idea of something from acetate to butyrate. You know, if we see those that are low, we're going to be able to really support them with a specific uh, fiber group, and uh, that's going to provide a lot of this uh, prebiotic activity that stimulates the growth of our bacteria. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when, um, when we have identified someone who has leaky gut, um, are we, like, what is the best way um, for us to approach, because a lot of people are super busy, right? We, we live in, our society today is, is kind of an instant gratification society. We want everything, we want it now. Um, we are doing so many things. We have so many irons in the fire all the time, which is one of the things that also adds to our stress, obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> so got all of these things going on in our body, how do we start to address that and fit it into this incredibly busy lifestyle that we lead now? Start by creating small wins. It's not about achieving perfection. My, you know, I, I enjoy saying it's about progress, not perfection. And do something that you can do today, no matter how busy or how intimidating, you know, making changes to your health may be. Do one thing that's going to just be a small win. And sometimes, you know, to be honest, that win is literally adding one extra glass of water to, to your day. You know, that win is taking 10 deep breaths before you chew your food so that we reduce the stress hormones that are circulating that push all the blood out to our limbs and not to our digestive organs. These things take no time in our day. NDT, no downtime. My busy executives love this. <laughs> so, you know, it starts by creating a little bit of trust in yourself by creating these small wins. And if you can gain some confidence and some of my patients, they're so scared to fail and they're so scared to make change in, in their, you know, they're so deep rooted in their ways. It's very intimidating, even though it may not be for you or I to say, hey, take gluten out of your diet. That is, that, that's like, like climbing Mount Everest. And we have to understand that being healthcare practitioners and coaches. So create small wins so that we can gain some momentum and they can start to earn their own trust because they're their best guide. We're just coaches. We're just here to kind of, they're their best doctor. We're, we're just here to kind of support and hold their hand and show them the way. But they're the ones that have to keep putting these, these feet forward. So I try to make, you know, I, I, as we all do, we make an assessment to see how fast we can challenge our patients. And it's important to make sure you challenge them, but it has to be in a way that doesn't, it, it, we can't make it easy for them to fail. And we have to make it easy for them to succeed and sometimes you know and another simple thing this again this gonna sound very funny and maybe not as applicable to health as you may think but have them make their bed that is already starting to say hey i'm in control of my day and some people it's amazing they just get out they don't have any time they don't do this or that and they run out the door and they wonder why their life is in disarray and everything's so chaotic you know start to tell yourself and send signals to the rest of your body and all the cells in your body that you are in control of your day and sometimes we have to go back to these basics and it is important to make sure that we do that before we get to any sort of real sexy detox or sexy hormones, bioidenticals, things like that. We've got to get the foundation set. So I, I, I know we're getting um, a, a little bit short on time, but I did want to touch on hormones a little bit um, because um, the majority of our audience are women and um, we are in different age categories and we have so many different things that are going on with our bodies at any given point in in our journey and um sometimes it can be really confusing and intimidating and you're trying to figure out not just what's going on with you but how to even start the process of identifying what's going on and then once you start the process of educating yourself and identifying there's just so much information out there and so many avenues to take. So how do we simplify that and make sure that we are where we need to be? You've got to work with a functional healthcare practitioner, you know, take the guesswork out of everything, everybody, you know, there's so many questionnaires we can download online. There's so many books we can read, but just take the guesswork out go, you know, I know it requires a lot of people to use some of their savings to do this and you know, their hard earned money. 
But I'm telling, telling you right now, if that's something that you've been struggling with for years and years and you still haven't got the answers, think of how much time and energy and money you've wasted to this point when you're trying to do it blindly. Get a roadmap. Invest into somebody who can show you how to do this. And that should include the specific types of tests that some of them we've talked about today. One of my favorite hormonal tests on the planet right now is called the Dutch test. And this is a urine test that looks at all of your sex, steroid, and adrenal hormones. And by the way, all of the metabolites. So therefore, that is the most comprehensive hormone panel you can do on the planet right now. And this is something that is just a huge value to, to anybody who will do that. And not everybody has the resources to do this, event, but it's something that I really encourage people. Look, if you're, tr if you're buying every fad supplement and every little book that comes out, I'm telling you, if you went back and did the math, you would be spending 10 times more doing it that way than you would be by just investing, getting the route that you're meant to be on and following that. And uh, it really is, that's the best advice I can give right now. I agree. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I have to really try to impart to people is that this whole process is an investment in yourself. Um, and trying to, to do things on your own a lot of times is exactly what you said about all of the, I can't even, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to <laughs> add yeah. together all of the things that I did when I, you know, my numbers were reading morbidly obese. And so all of the things that I tried um, before I figured it out, I spent a lot of money and yeah. I could have, you know, gotten a coach. I could have made my um, choices differently so that I, I didn't make those mistakes in the beginning. And that's, and that's why we're doing things like this to help other people to learn from what we've done in the past. I too have done that, Yvette, you know, and even more important than money right now is time. You know, time is not something we ever get back. That's a non-renewable resource. And that's something that if we can help people save time and do this more efficient, efficiently so that they have all that time to spend where it's most important with your friends and your family, um, to me, that is, there's not a price you can put on that. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I want to talk about specific steps when we're getting started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an assessment, right? We're going to um, get with someone where we can start the tests and figure out what our starting point actually is. What are all of our mm -hmm. levels? Um, where are we out of balance? And then where do we go? So... Assuming somebody has done some diagnostics and we start to get, you know, we throw the net really wide out there and we start to see what comes back to us, then we're going to be able to hone in on the systems that are out of balance. And that's when you're going to really start to see, you know, some exciting things happen. We're going to start to apply certain food choices uh, to, our, to our day. We're going to start to work on certain organs and, and fortify them and make them work more efficiently so that we burn fat and drop inflammatory uh, 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 triggers in our body. This is, it's a step-by-step -step process in the sense that, you know, you don't have to always do the same, same thing with everybody, but you got to make sure that you are just correcting that gut, working on the absorption of nutrients, and then a lot of other things start to fall into place, right? Getting your liver and your kidneys going, as I mentioned earlier in lymphatics, is just going to remove a lot of that debris, but you've got to start in the gut. You've got to replace what you're deficient in because some of those nutrients are involved with 300 biochemical reactions every second. And wow. think of all the systems that are involved, let alone liver and kidneys, that you can impact on a beneficial way as soon as you give them the fuel to do that. We don't heal anybody, Yvette. We coach people. Our patients heal themselves when they're given the right tools. So all we can do, you and I, is we can just show them what those tools are and hope that they take them and, and apply them so that their body does the healing. And so to me, that's, that's a clarification I like to make is I just want to make sure that we are just providing people with the best tools possible. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but tell me if it does. Oh, it absolutely does. Because, you know, you can get the best advice from the best doctors, but when you go home, if you're not doing what they told you to do, then you're not making any progress anyway. And it's the same thing with coaches. Um, but um, for the tools that we're giving, you have a tool that's coming up um, pretty soon on your online mm -hmm. health program. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you. We are, we are launching a, an online program to help people who can't get into to work with. We, we have a very busy practice and, and we do a lot of gut work, as you can probably tell with this talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are trying to help people who can't come in to see a functional medicine doctor 
um, and just give them some basics and some core steps to get going and also some information that they can take to their doctors that they may be working with to help them, again, assist them on their journey and get that roadmap laid out in front of them. So this is something that we're going to be launching in the next uh, next six weeks. So uh, we encourage anybody who's interested in helping their gut to check that out. Well, we will definitely send some information out about that as well once um, you're ready to launch. But I think that's great because, you know, a lot of times stuff that I do is late at night or early in the morning when offices are closed. And it's great to be able to have that as a resource to, to go to at your own convenience and still get the things that you need. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, as we draw to a close here, um, I know that you had a free gift for our audience. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I encourage everybody to uh, download uh, our e or my ebook called Wellness Without Limits. And uh, this is something that will give you some core steps just in life, just some, some quick wins that you can start to implement today for everyone who's listening. So uh, please take advantage of that. All right. So we will have the link for the, um, the ebook for everyone to be able to take advantage of. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, sharing so much incredible information with us. I feel like we were able to really get a good foundation on how to start um, mm -hmm. because, you know, assessment is important. Um, and then once you identify what's going on, that's how you can make a plan. You can't. And, you know, and that's the key word, Yvette, is take action. Take one thing from this. If it's only one thing, just do one thing. You know, there's lots of little pearls we provided here today. And in all of your other talks, just take action. I encourage people to not sit back and get what I call analysis paralysis. <laughs> do something. Get out there and just put that foot forward. And you know what? You will succeed. And just by doing that first step, it's going to start the process of success for you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in today. Um, we are just so honored that we were able to have Dr. Dempster on with us and um, please join us for the rest of our series, Bear Wolf Fat Diets, where you can learn to commit to losing all the weight you want and keeping it off no matter what and creating a healthy lifestyle. Thanks, Yvette.